that you look, there seems to be something going on in this world in which we live. And certainly we, we depend upon God, who is the creator of all things, to be able to look out and to take care of those who belong to him. And for that, we ought to be eternally grateful. Jesus, who died upon the cross and gave up his life, the Son of God, was willing to leave heaven and come here and to live a cruel life. That we might be able to have this relationship with God that we didn't always have. And for that, we ought to be grateful. This morning, we want to talk to you for a few moments, and hopefully, and prayerfully, something will be said that will help us to see the need to draw closer to God. I don't know about you, but having this relationship with God is one of the most important things to me in life. It's, it's the thing that, that gives me stability. It is the thing that is able to cause me to continue to move along this Christian journey. Just knowing that he's God. And that he can do all things by himself. This morning, coming from the book of Hebrews chapter 3. Again, we want to share with you words that has been placed in God's book through the writers of those who were led by the Holy Spirit in order to guide us and remind us of the things that we need to do in this present life. I believe that sometimes we just become slowful and unconcerned about the most important thing that we have in life, which is our soul. For I hear John writing in the book of Revelation in chapter uh, 20 and uh, verses 19 and 20, he says there in, in, in Revelation chapter 22, 19 and 20, he says, if any man adds to the prophecy of this book, God shall add the plagues unto his life. If any man subtracts from the prophecy that is written in this book, then God will subtract his life out of, his name out of the book of life. And that was over some 2,000 years ago. And the thing that I love about God's word is that God's word does not change. You, you see, in this world in which we live, things are constantly changing. But the thing that is so uh, securing about God's word is that it will never change. Uh, Here's Jesus saying over there in Matthew chapter 24 and the verses 35 heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall never pass away. Jesus says over there in John 12 48 he that rejected me and receiveth not my words has one that judges him for the same word shall judge him in the last day. I'm glad this morning that I serve a God who is consistent. Who has put a book here that can be followed that nobody can change. And one that I don't have to worry about if anybody has added or subtracted to. 
Because it is the word of God. Paul writes here in Hebrews chapter 3. And beginning at verse 7, he, he writes to our remembrance. And he, he wants us to, to remember that, that what they did in the days of old caused them to go contrary against the will of God. And because they went contrary to God's will, God caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And he said, I, I want you who are children of God today, be mindful that what you have in Christ Jesus allows you a better relationship than what they had back in that time. He says, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and the days of temptation and the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always error in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take ye therefore, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exalt one another daily while it is called day, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the days of the provocation. This morning, this morning we want to talk to you for a few moments on the subject, are you listening to God? We, we, we live in a time when folks are listening to everybody but God. And then, and then, and then we, we get our information from folks that we trust that we believe that no God. <laughs> and I'm simply saying to you this morning, you need to be listening to what God's word has to say. Mm -hmm. We we live in a time when they have made wrong right. And right <coughs> wrong. And the Bible says that even though they might leave it to be, God will cause them to be judged upon their way of thinking. But this morning, the question that is on the floor, are you listening to God? Church, we, we have a better system and a better way of life than what they had in the Old Testament. But here the writer keeps on reminding us, don't allow yourselves to fall into the snares of Satan. Don't be like they were back at that time. We, we have a lot of things that, that causes us to go contrary to the will of God. 
We talked a little bit yesterday in our men's class about how this world is so wicked. And the challenges that we have to face in this time and the things that we have to go through. But the only thing that seems to matter this morning and in this life and what we need is that I need to know what God has to say about the situation. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 that God who stepped out on nothing and decided to create something. Decided that there would come a time when he was going to step aside and give all authority to his son who is called Jesus Christ. The Bible says there in Hebrews chapter 1 and beginning at verse 1, God who had some time and in diver men is spake and time passed by the fathers and the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world. He says that God has placed all authority in Jesus Christ. No wonder when I read the scriptures, I hear Jesus saying in Matthew chapter 28, 18, and 19, heaven, and, he says that, that heaven and earth, I have all power. Heaven and in earth, I have all power. God has given all power to Jesus Christ. And it is Jesus who is in control. He tells his apostles, go there and preach the gospel to every creature. He that is believeth and is baptized shall be saved. How, how can you say this? Jesus, because my father has given me all power in heaven and on earth. Are you listening to God this morning? You see, there are many that are listening to C and NN. They're listening to what the world news has to say. Somebody might even want to know what Trump has to say this morning. But the only one I'm concerned about is what God has to say. For you see, God is the one that you'll have to stand before and to give an account of those things that you have done in this present life. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 and the verse is 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of the prophecy, and keep these things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John writes in Revelation, and John simply says that, that uh, blessed is the man who will read and remember what he has read that he might be able to realize that the time is at hand and that God is going to be coming soon to judge each and every one of us. What do you want me to understand, John? In Revelation chapter 2 and the verse 7, he says here, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says 
unto the church. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. What are you saying this morning, Brother Stewart? I'm simply saying that in order to receive God's blessings, you're going to have to be in Christ Jesus. You're going to have to be able to do the things that God has required us to do. And I, I want you to, to, to lock in this morning because the reason why I want to bring it this way is because I want you to understand that you need to understand and see that we need to listen to what God is saying yeah, yeah. this morning. Not because of who I am, but because of who God is. We're going to, to build the case this morning. And then we're going to look at some examples and see how those responded when they heard God's word. The Bible says in Revelation 2 and 29, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Are you listening to God this morning? You see, God has given us instructions that we need to abide by in order to be pleasing and acceptable in His sight. I don't know about you, but I find it challenging in this world in which we live because every day there are decisions that have to be made. And in making those decisions, sometimes you need to get some advice yes. that comes from God. And sometimes it will cause you to wrestle with how should I handle the situation, but it always be, needs to be with God's consent Amen. and God's will. And I can say to you this morning, that as long as God is for you, there's nobody that can be against you. <laughs> we have to learn how to trust God. Sometimes we talk a good game. But our walk is shaky. And I'm saying this morning, are you listening to God? For the Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and uh, verse 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness that the man of God might be thoroughly furnished into all good works. If you are planning on making heaven your home, you are going to have to follow what God has instructed in his book. Amen. And the only way that you can do that this morning is by listening to God. 2 Timothy 2, 15. The Bible tells us study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God has given his pattern on how man ought to come and the way in which he wants them to be saved. There are many people in this world that are telling folks all different kind of ways to be saved. But I want you to hear me this morning that God has given us a way. Yes, yes. And except you come by God's way, you come as a thief and a robber. You see, over there in John chapter 14, when Jesus was getting ready to leave and, and gone back 
to his father. He, he called his disciples together and he wanted them to understand that I got to go back home to the father. But the disciples were confused. They, they had become comfortable with having Jesus in their midst. And Jesus was telling them that I, I got to leave. And, and so he, he lets them know that, that I need you to be concerned about the things that I'm going to give to you and the things that I'm going to leave for you. So he simply tells them after he had told them, let not your hearts be troubled. He, he wants his disciples to understand that, that I know that you're troubled by the fact that I told you that I'm leaving, but I'm saying to you, don't let your hearts be troubled. Church, sometimes we can't allow our hearts to be troubled. We, we've got to trust God. And he simply tells them, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And then he goes on to tell him, in my father's house are many mansions. If it wasn't so, he said, I would have told you. He said, but I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there, you might be also. But, but then he goes a little bit further down there in verse 16. He simply tells him, he says, I'm going to go to the father. I'm going to ask my father to send you a comforter. And then in verse 26, he says, when the comforter has come, which is the Holy Spirit, he's going to bring back to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. What are you saying this morning, Brother Stuart? I don't have to rely on what man say. I need to rely upon what God has to say. Amen. You. You see, he, he told him, he said, I'm going to ask the Father to send you a comforter. And when he comes, he's going to bring back to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Over there in Acts chapter 1, when Jesus had ascended over there in Matthew, he told the disciples, meet me in Jerusalem told them while he was while they were there. He says, this is what I need you to understand, that the Father is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in Jerusalem, it would take place. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible simply says, while they were there in Jerusalem, they were endowed with the Holy Spirit. And they began to teach the way that God wanted it to be taught. And on that day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, Peter preaches the first gospel sermon that had ever been preached. And at the conclusion of the service, the Jews asked the question, men and brothers, what shall we do? Peter simply said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sin. And then from that point on, the church begins in exist his existence. But here's what I want you to understand. Is that if you are expected to make heaven your home, you're going to have to do it the way God has instructed you mm -hmm. to do it. And according to God's word, according to what God has to say, God has put it here in the book of inspiration on how one ought to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me share with you this morning. Over there in the book of Acts chapter 8. The Bible says that that the angel of the Lord had approached a man named Philip. And Philip was one who had been chosen over there in Acts chapter 6 when, when there was a problem 
over there with the Hebrew and the Grecian women and, and then he was laid hands on by the apostles and now Philip is out here and he's doing the work of God but, but, but the Bible says that as the angel of the Lord appears unto Philip beginning around verse 36 he simply tells them that, that he tells them to go down to this particular place. He said there's a man who's coming through who's a unit. And I want you to go down there and to preach unto him and teach him the things that he needs to know. This is why it's important that we need to hear what God has to say. For you see, uh, this man uh, who was a unit who was already coming from worship. I want you to see this morning that the Bible said he had already been to worship. And, and he's coming home from worship. And he's reading the book of Isaiah. The chapter is 53. And he began reading about a man who was slow. Who, like a sheep open, not his mouth, and went before those and they ridiculed him and mistreated him and did all these things to them. And the man is reading the book and he can't quite understand the text. And the Bible says that the Spirit led Philip to the chariot. Sometimes in life, there are those who are honest, who only want to know what God has to say. And they're searching the scriptures and they're reading the scriptures and sometimes God needs to send a man down there to help them get better clarification of what it is that they're reading. And the Bible says that that as Philip approached the chair, he asked the unit a question. Understandest thou what thou reading? Has anybody ever asked you? I've been reading this scripture here, but I don't really understand what it's saying. The unit asked Philip a question. Understandest thou what thou readest? And 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 Philip answers the question. He answers the question for the unit and he says to him at the same place of the scripture in which he was reading the Bible said he preached unto him Jesus. What are you saying brother Stuart? I'm simply saying that even though the man didn't understand what he was reading Jesus was the thing that he was reading. And he didn't even understand what he was reading. But the Bible says that Philip got up into the chariot, began at the same scripture. He didn't go nowhere else. He began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And the Bible says that as the chariot was going along this way, that the unit sees some water. He asked Philip, see, here's water. What's hindering me from being baptized? Why do you think he would say that, Brother Stewart? Because when Philip preached Unto him, Jesus, he preached the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says 
that when he got out of the chair, Philip asked him a question, do thou believe it? And he said, I believe it that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then the Bible says that the both of them went down into the water and he baptized them. That's not what man says, that's what God says. And then, and then if that's not enough for you, over there in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, there was a man called Cornelius. Cornelius was a good man. He was a devout man. He was one that gave much arms to the people and prayed to God there. Know some folk like that? And, 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 and they want to have a relationship with God, but I want you to understand this morning, it doesn't make a difference how they feel. It all depends on if they want to listen to what God has to say. You see, Cornelius was probably better than some of us. But it wasn't about who Cornelius was. It was about what Cornelius needed to do in order to be right with God. You see, the Bible says that in a vision, he seen that he needed to send down for a man called Peter. Peter left from where he was, but before Peter left, I need you to understand something. Sometimes when we are going out to teach, we need to make sure that we're clear yeah, yeah. on what it is that we're going to be teaching. Because you see, Peter, Peter at first decided that maybe this wasn't something he ought to do. Because Cornelius was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. But, but I want you to understand something this morning. According to God's plan, this was the way God was working. This whole thing. And so the Bible simply says that when Peter had doubts about the situation, God put him in a trance and allowed all manner of animals to come before him and, and show up in a sheet in the Bible says. That Peter was told to arise, slay, and eat. And he said, not so, Lord. For there were unclean things among them. And God simply says to him, Peter, whatsoever I have created, don't call common nor unclean. Peter, later on, simply says, God has no respect of a person. He went on down and he got with Cornelius and the Bible says he taught Cornelius and baptized him and his whole household. But I want you to see this morning that Cornelius had to hear what God had to say and not what Cornelius thought to be. We live in a society today where everybody has their own way of serving God. But I want you to understand this morning, it really doesn't make a difference. The only thing that makes a difference is if God has said it and if you're listening to what God has to say. There were two of God's men who were thrown in jail in Acts chapter 16. And while they were in jail, the Bible says that they sung and prayed. And in the midst of them being in jail, the Bible says God caused the earthquake to come along. And in the midst of the earthquake, 
all of the chains fell off and everybody seemed to be free to go. The jailer attempted to take his own life and the Bible said, Paul told him, he said, fear not, for we are all in. Why do you, what are you saying, Brother Stewart? I'm saying that God presented an opportunity that a man who thought he was in charge realized that he needed to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many in this world that have not yet understood the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have a job to do this morning. We need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all mankind and get them to understand that everybody needs to hear what God has to say. It's not. It's not about us just coming together and just having a good time in the Lord. It is our responsibility to come together on the first day of the week that we might be able to worship God the way God wants us to worship. But let me say to you this morning that when we leave here, we're still obligated to worship God every day of our lives. When we leave here, we are still worshiping God. And we need to live our lives in the way that we are showing others that we represent the God that we serve. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm thankful to God. Because if it was not for God, we wouldn't have a right to the tree of life. If it was not the relationship between God and his son and him being willing to leave heaven and to come to earth to give his life, that we might have life. To give us an opportunity and a chance that we might be able to make heaven our home. It wasn't always that way, sir. And we need to be grateful. We need to be grateful of the fact that God has his word here that we might be able to follow that would lead us from here to glory. But I need you to understand this morning. The only way that you're going to make it is if it's God's way. Amen. The writer writes here and he simply tells us that we need to remember what happened in the days of old. How even though the Israelites were God's people, God still made it that it was necessary that they followed what he wanted them to do. Church, I, I can't stress enough to you the fact that regardless to whatever this world has to offer. It's in no comparison to what God has for eternal life. There's no exchange that can be given for the greatest gift that God has given to mankind. Jesus Christ, the one who hung between two things, shed his blood for the remission of sins. That we might be able to become a part of God's spiritual family. A family that God looks after. One that God is pleased with. And in order for that to happen, church, We've got to be doing things God's way. Not our way, 
but God's way. And then God will allow things to happen. I, I'm reminded over there in Acts chapter 2 that the Bible says that the Lord adds to the church daily such as should be saved. It ain't about nobody else. It's about God. And then God puts you into his spiritual family. Yes, but I need you to understand that once one has accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is only the beginning of your spiritual walk. For you see, Satan then will attack you and cause you to doubt whether or not what you've done was right. He will create problems in your life and cause you to wonder if this is even worth it. And even to the point to where he will put the pressure on you of things materialistically that will cause you to be driven away from the cause of Christ. But I say to you this morning that you need to hang in there. You need to hang in there and to give God the glory. There is no other way that a man can merit his way to heaven other than he hear what God has to say. There are those who will tell you that you can pray your way into heaven. But I want you to understand this morning that that's not even Bible. For you see, a Paul, who was Saul, when he first was knocked down and he was told to go into Joppa, he told them, go there and it will be told thee what thou must do. Yes. And the Bible says that when Ananias came unto him, he found him pray, told him to arise and be baptized and wash away his sins. There'll be those who will tell you that you can just come on down and call on the name of Jesus and you'll get him. You can't get Jesus by calling on him. The Bible says in Galatians 3, 27, for as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I want you to understand this morning that there will be those who will come along and tell you what you can do to have this relationship with God. I'm saying to you this morning, you need to listen to what God has to say. God is the author and the finisher of all things. It is God who put the plan into existence. It is God who allowed his son to come. According to John 3.16, the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting. Are you listening to God? Are you hearing what God has to say this morning? Are you willing to change your life to make it what God wants it to be? There are those that are even in the men that are members of the body of Christ. God has fixed it. So that if an errant member of the body of Christ slips and falls, he can make it right with God. But I want you to know this morning that if you don't do it God's way, it'll never be right. Everything has to be done God's way. 
But you see over there in John chapter 1. 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. And the verse is 7. The Bible says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Then the Bible simply says that if we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. But then the Bible goes on to simply say that if we confess our faults one to another, that the blood of Jesus Christ is willing and able to cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. The only way to make it right with God is that we need to hear what God has to say. Church, I think sometimes we become slow and uncaring about even our own souls. But we get caught up in the cares of this world. And we're more concerned about the things that will disappear. We're concerned about our homes and our cars and our bank accounts and, and our jobs and all those things that causes us to be able to move around in this world here. But I'm simply saying that if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't even have those things. And so what we have to do is we have to learn how to change our way to God's way. How am I going to do that, Brother Stewart? You're going to have to listen to what God has to say. If you're here this morning, and, and you're not a member of the body of Christ, and you haven't obeyed the, God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, I simply say to you this morning that you need to hear what God has to say. And what God has to simply say is he says, I allowed my son Jesus to come and to die the death of the cross. That he might be able to make it right that you can be forgiven of all your sins. Allow you to become pure once again and, and to come into the body of Christ and to establish a relationship with me that you might be able to walk with me daily. And the only way that that can happen is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Him coming and dying, being buried and raising again the third day and becoming victorious over death, hell, and the grave. If it was not for Jesus rising on the third day, it would be no need for us to even be here. Mm -hmm. But because he has become victorious, I need you to see this morning that the only way one can get right with God is that you have to listen to what God is simply saying. If you're here and already a member of the body of Christ and you might have slipped and fell, you, you, you might have had some difficulties throughout the week and you didn't do what God instructed you to do then you need to get it right with God. Because what you don't want to do is die this day so that when you stand before God, you won't be able to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I said the other day, even in our Bible class, I said, how many of us would send our loved ones out in the midst in front of a moving car. Somebody would say, that, that's insane. Well, let me say to you, when we don't share the gospel and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who are members of our own family, and those that we proclaim 
to love is like sending them out in front of a vehicle that is moving and it's going to destroy them if they don't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no way that a person can have a life with God. And we need to be concerned about the fact that we love one another. And that we're willing, and that we're willing to do whatever is necessary to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who know not the goodness of Christ. And to help those who have obeyed the gospel of Christ. That they might be able to see their undone condition. And to come to God before it's everlasting too late. There, there are many. There are many who have began this Christian journey and have not really kept in touch with God's Word. And I'm simply saying this morning that if you are expecting to make heaven your own, you're going to have to hear what God has to say. God has the last call. Everybody's going to stand before God. You don't think so over there in Revelation chapter 20. The Bible says that the books will be open. And those books that will be open represents our lives. It represents everything that you and I have done in our lives. And God is going to call us to the judgment. And he's going to take that book that represents our lives. And the Bible says that he will judge us according to the book, which is the book of life. And everybody is going to have to give an account for what they have done and their present life. And I'm simply saying to you this morning that at the end of the day, when life is no longer upon the face of this earth, and you have to stand before God, will you be able to hear and say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant? Not based upon the fact of you being perfect, but based upon the fact of you hearing and listening to what God had to say. Not your way, but God's way. These are some terrible times in which we live. Mankind are doing all kinds of things. And yet, God expects us to live a life that will bring glory and honor unto him. The lesson this morning was are you listening to God? And this is a message for not only you, but for me. We're all accountable. We can sit here and think that it don't mean nothing. I'm saying to you this morning, if God said it, it means something. And I don't care, you can figure, well, I can do it, I can do it anyway, I want to do it. I'm saying to you this morning, everybody, everybody's going to give an account at the last day. And it's not going to be based upon how you feel or what you think. It's going to be based upon the things that are written in this book. And so I ask this morning, are you listening to what God has to say? If there are those that are here that are not members of the body of Christ, the way one comes is by hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the death, burial, and the resurrection. And then they must believe that. And then they must be willing to repent, which simply means make a change in their life. Meaning that no longer do I want to live for me, 
But now I want to live for God. And then they must be willing to confess Christ as the son of the living God. And be willing to put him on in baptism for the remission of sins. And then, and then uh, for those who are already members of the body of Christ, we, we, we said it over and over again, and, and I think that you know, the thing that becomes so critical for those is that you know, sometimes we just feel like, you know, I can wait sin out. Let me tell you something. Sin don't go nowhere. Not in God's sight. The only way you can wipe sin out is to repent and ask for forgiveness. And the Bible says again that the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. I, 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 know, I know this morning that there might be some saying, you know, uh, that's an awful hard lesson, but I'm telling you, God is an awful hard God. He's a loving God. But I want you to know this morning that just like those who fought, uh, who followed in the wilderness for 40 years, God will let you live on this earth 80, 90 years and then cause you to stand before him and tell you to part for me, you workers of iniquity. This thing is for real. This thing is for real. And it's all about, are you listening to God? I've had to change a lot of my ways in life. Not because of what I wanted to do, but because of what God's word said that I needed to do. And I can say to you this morning, Based upon the relationship that I had with God, all of it was worth it. All of it was worth it. Because God has turned around and been better to me than I could have ever been to myself. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God. And so this morning I share and I come to you simply saying, have you listened to what God has to say? We ask that you come as together we stand to sing the invitation. 593. There's a mountain free here for you. Listen, no, it's going